Hello everybody, welcome to this new video from Bicotic. I've got a short little video for you today about a little aerodynamic niggle that I have with the latest aero bikes. I have gone down the rabbit hole with this a little bit and the title of the video suggests that there's a conspiracy. Spoiler alert, there probably isn't. I'm probably just making a mountain out of a molehill, but I thought we'd have some fun with it and yeah, see what you think. See if you think that I'm getting in a pickle over nothing. So what is it that's bothering me? Well. To give it some context, this is a video that I watched about three years ago. And this is Josh Portner from Silka. And he's a pretty cool guy, he used to work for Zip and knows a heck of a lot about aerodynamics. And that's something I should point out. I know nothing about aerodynamics. So everything in this video is just what I've seen, read and has popped into my head. But the key point in this video for me is Josh from Silka talking about the 1989 Tour de France and in that Tour de France, Greg LeMond beat Laurent Fignon by eight seconds in a remarkable comeback. Mostly due to the fact that he used these weird tri bars, which had never been used in a pro bike race before, I don't think. Anyway, he points out that effectively that eight seconds over 20k could be accounted for by something like this pencil sticking out of your bicycle. So what we're saying is that this pencil could cause enough aerodynamic drag to cost you eight seconds in the Tour de France and effectively lose the race. So keep that thought in your mind. So this is the Cannondale System 6, a top of the range aero bike. Now by no means am I singling out Cannondale here. This applies to every disc brake aero road bike out there as far as I can tell. But Cannondale very kindly have this head-on photo on their website, which is very handy for me to use. So if we look at this beautiful aerodynamic bike, I mean the first thing to point out is just how much work we have to do to actually make an aero bike properly aero with all the dreadful transmission pieces all sticking out in the wind all over the place. It's going to be quite a while before we actually get really, really aero bikes. But there is one little piece in here that really does bother me and you probably have spotted it by now because it does look remarkably like a pencil. And yes, we are talking about the front brake hose, sitting there proudly catching the wind, sucking the watts out of your legs. Now I guess the part of this that really kind of bothers me is, on the one hand, and again I can't just single out Cannondale for this because all the manufacturers do it, they produce a huge pile of bump about everything that goes into making an aerodynamic bike. I mean, there's mountains of it in this white paper from Cannondale on the System 6, and I don't even doubt that actually it all makes sense and that they probably do lots of work in the wind tunnel and stuff but to do all of that and then we still be in a position where we have this in the wind it just seems a bit incongruent and that actually is a word which i proved to someone the other day and i think i used it in the right place so the next thing i wanted to show you was how a cylinder is literally the worst shape that you can have in aerodynamics and i only know about this because i've read about it on the internet but I thought it'd be fun to fire up the AI image creator and I asked it to produce this image for me, which I thought was quite good, really. It shows you all the little eddies that get created. I think they're called eddies. And as my first attempt, I thought that was a pretty good effort. However, never happy. I thought I'd go for version two and try and improve on it. And things got a little bit weird, to say the least. And then I got completely distracted and made a MotoGP bike out of an octopus. And then lo and behold, that became a woman riding a neon bike side saddle. So I went a little bit off track somehow. So let's get back on track. And I just wanted to fire up bicotic.com and show you something that I noticed while I was researching this. The bikes I want to look at are the TT bike and the aero bike. And if I just load them up. So here's the road aero bike and here's the TT bike. And there's two reasons I wanted to bring these up. First of all, I thought that was a really good example of the difference between the geometry of a TT bike. So a time trial or triathlon bike and then a road bike both aero but both very different geometries the tt bike much more bringing you forward over the bottom bracket really low at the front very aggressive and will be very twitchy and hard to ride but super fast as opposed to the road bike which is much more laid back relatively to the tt bike but the other reason i wanted to bring these up was clearly this is an aero bike clearly it's had a lot of work on it to make it aero but again it's actually a really good example of our pencil in the wind if i just zoom in here there it is now i suspect what happened was 
back when disc brakes started coming into the road bike world, they basically all agreed that this is how they would do it. Because clearly the group set manufacturers produce these separately to the frame manufacturers, and they will have had to have agreed on a standard at some point, and this is what they decided on. But I guess what I'm saying is that it's time to update that. Okay, so what we have here is the rather lovely B-Works Barmac. Well, at least we have half a one anyway. And this is a pretty aero bike, not a full-blown aero bike. But it was a 3D model that I had lying around, so I thought it would save a bit of time. Quite clearly, it's a disc-braked bike. And as we can see here, the caliper is bolted onto the fork leg. And then out of the top of the caliper comes the brake hose, or the pencil as we've started calling it. And there it is, sitting in the wind, massively slowing you down, which is obviously not what you want. Okay, and then what we have here is one of the Bicotic solutions. Again, we have a rather lovely B-Works Barmac in this lovely faded green. However, this time we zoom in on the caliper. What I'm suggesting is that we actually take the pencil and we put it behind the fork leg. That's got to be better, hasn't it? Isn't that a pretty simple thing to do? Obviously, Shimano and SRAM might have something to say about that, but that seems pretty simple to me. And then when you look at it from the front, lo and behold, the pencil has moved out of the way. We can have the top of the caliper nice and smooth and aero. That's got to be a better idea, hasn't it? Put the brake hose behind the fork leg. So that's one of my ideas. What do you think? Comment down below if you like that idea. Would it help, do we think? Now, it has to be said that I am a realist and I know that nothing's going to change quickly on this. I wouldn't have thought. So here's idea number two, and we've gone back to the first B-Works Barmac, and this time I have my little invention on the brake hose, and it's called the Bicotic Hosey. And what we have here is an aerodynamic shroud to go over the cable. Look at that. Oh yeah, I mean, how cool is that? Let's zoom in on this beautiful piece of technology fully aero, 3D printed entirely from recycled rim brake pads. Oh yeah, that has got to be on your Christmas list, right? I mean, how many watts is that going to save, do you think? Maybe one, maybe two? And for 12 99 that has got to be worthwhile. And I think that looks pretty cool as well. The Bicotic Hosey. Fantastic. If you'd like to uh, get a pre-order in, put a comment down below. Speaking of retail, what do we think of the new Wiggle design? I have to admit, I'm struggling with it a bit. I've also been struggling with their site. Seems a bit better today, but I've been struggling to search for stuff. I bought something a few days ago and I actually had to find it via Google and I managed to order it, but then the every driver, he dumped it at an address miles away from my house. And every used to be called Hermes and every doesn't seem to be any better than Hermes. Wiggle, seriously, get rid of every. So if you get stuck, not being able to get stuff to work on Wiggle, you can go to Chain Reaction because they're exactly the same. They're owned by the same people. But the problem with Chain Reaction I was having was I couldn't sign in because either I couldn't remember my password or it can't remember my password. So I clicked the button to reset my password and the email never turns up. I've checked my email address. I've written to Chain Reaction to ask them why I can't get it. Their reply was to check my spam folder, which I'd already told them I had checked. Chain reaction, I can't log in. So that's enough complaining, and I just wanted to run these by you. After doing all the research on my Bicotic Hosey, I then went to the AI program again just to see whether it knew anything I didn't, and I thought I got some pretty cool results. I've got a cassette made out of a disc rotor. I also got this, which absolutely blew my mind. It's a disc rotor, but somehow it's been changed into a crank set. As you can see, there's an inner disc rotor and an outer disc rotor, and it's been anodized black. I thought that was pretty cool. And then as for what this gubbins is here, I've literally got no idea. But at the same time, for some reason, it designed me this rather cool aero bike. The slight catch with this is I think you could probably only use it as a drag bike because you can't actually steer it. Bit of a drawback. It also created for me this aero bike, which, ooh, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? These wheels look mint. Not quite sure what's going on there. So that's pretty much it for this video. I thought I'd leave you with this. I thought it'd be quite funny to make a little story up and then make the images in the AI program. There's a lot of AI in this today, isn't there? It's taken over the world. Do you remember when we didn't have AI three weeks ago? Man's new bike is delivered in bike box. So the AI didn't quite get that right. This is probably the closest image. The bike's almost in the box. Man then excitedly shows his new aero road bike to his partner, 
I'm not quite sure that AI was on the same page as me here. I'm also not quite sure what's happened to their hands. I then thought that man would then take his aero road bike to the pub to show his pals. And in this image, man became action man. And it looks like he took his bike to a set from the Harry Potter movie. And in this image here, man parks bike in bar. And is it just me or does he look a bit like Primoz Roglic? Anyway, he had a great time at the pub, ended up sleeping rough dressed as Santa and his feet turned into a wheel from a 1982 rally grifter. I thought that was pretty cool. And on that bombshell, I'll leave you with this. This is a SWAT team on bicycles. Again, I thought this was pretty cool. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Go and check out bicotic.com. Until next time.